Yeah, g'day Bush Camping Tools here. Well, as I've already shown you uh, what I consider to be a big knife, and that is a knife which has got a seven inch blade or bigger, and that's all of these four knives here. Uh, so you've seen the video I've made on sm why small knives are better. Um, when a big knife's better, okay, so I wanna make a distinction uh, here right now, and that is about Big knives are better when you have to cut big things. Right, so this is a bangalow. Or a Conta Phoenix palm frond, and uh, you see me deal with these in the past. This is what we're going to cut the meat up on. You can also use it for many other things. Put simply, when I talk about big knives, why are they better for cutting big things? It's simply because if you've got a big blade and you've got a large object to cut, it makes sense because there's less strokes involved um, and a bigger object for a, a small bladed knife it may not go straight through that large object. Now that's different from when uh, you want to chop big things so let's look at that. Okay so this is what I was talking about this is about the size that you could use a big knife for of course okay as I said before you could use a hatchet on this it would be better if you had a hatchet but you can't use a small knife on this you'll be here all day trying to use a small knife on this. So let's have a go at it with this. Let's see, I just get myself a bit balanced here. Okay. Okay, so you can see that this chops in it pretty readily here. A small, this is pretty hard, this fallen uh, conifer here. So a small knife, you're just not going to be able to penetrate in there like that. You're, just, you're not going to have the momentum of a big knife to do that. Okay, you can see I made a pretty good dent into that there. Chopping this is pretty hard. I mean, it's a soft, soft wood actually. It's not a hard wood, but you wouldn't be able to do that with a small knife. You know, best way to cut into with a heavy implement like a hatchet or an axe is even better. Small axe, a small axe on this. Uh, but a big knife, you can work into it like that. And the thing what I'm going to do now is, is to break this off by hand because there's a lot of leverage going up there. Let's have a look at that. There's a lot of leverage here on there like that. Okay, so just land on that and busted that off and that was easier than hacking through with a knife. Even that is going to be a hard thing rather than a... No little knife is going to go through that. Sugar cane, tough as, right through the node. You need the weight of a big knife. Do this, a little knife is just not going to do that right on some hard objects like this. And you have to remember that uh, out in the wilderness, we're going to talk about, you know, not just the wilderness of montane forests or deserts. There's also the tropics. And in the tropics, you may very well be eating stuff like this, sugarcane. Right, okay, so this is one, another uh, good reason to have a big knife. And that's for, as I said, chopping uh, big things. And this is a green coconut. 
So uh, I, I've done some extensive camping, and you've probably seen it in some other videos, uh, where we subsisted primarily from green coconut water uh, on, on the beaches and that. So I'm just going to use this uh, big knife. If you don't have a machete, you need a big knife, and a machete, of course, is a big knife. And uh, let's, let's cut into this thing. Now, uh, there's the getting into the coconut in there. Now, it's possible to do it with a small knife, but you really will be there a month of Sundays trying to do it with a small knife, uh, and you could probably damage the small knife in, in the process, you know, of, of, of trying to do this. small nut this one and a big knife just gives you obviously a longer blade it gives you more reach into what you're trying to cut and less effort okay Let's check those chunks aside and see if we can there we go right okay so, so here we go, here's the, the nut and the coconut water in there. It's quite a soft one, this one. Let's... Cut that off. Very fibrous. And normally if you're doing this on a beach, you've got the sand to prop this up. Right, okay, let's just get a glass. And uh, we will take that coconut milk. Actually, I'll we'll take a bowl. So you can see that. Fresh coconut milk or coconut water to be precise. You know, I don't want to talk about axes and hatchets because they have a serve a different purpose altogether for serious. Uh, thing. So if you was going to try to chop this uh, fallen birch in half, uh, you'd be pretty insane to try to do it with a knife. You'd use an axe or a saw, preferably an axe. But if you have to chop small things and you're looking at big knives, you're looking at, you need a knife, uh, which is this one, this one is one of them, and, 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 and this one here is one, and this one's a little bit less one of them. And this is the third less uh, useful knife for chopping things, even though they're big. And I'll start off with why this is not so useful for chopping as a big knife, because it's not too heavy. Uh, you need some kind of momentum when you're chopping, just like an axe or a hatchet has a very heavy head. And there's a reason why the head is heavy and they don't make the heads hollowed out, etc. Because you need some momentum, you need some energy, a lot of energy when you're impacting on the wood. And so a heavier knife is going to be better uh, for chopping. Now, uh, the downside of that is, if you want to take a large knife with you out camping and hiking, is it's going to generally be a lot heavier than a small knife. So you have to consider the weight, uh, your pack weight then, if you're going to carry it on your pack, or just simply the weight that you're going to have strapped to your side when you're out uh, walking. And we all know if you wear lighter boots, uh, where it doesn't require really heavy boots to be worn. It's much easier to walk in lighter boots and to strap on a pair of mountaineering boots and walk the same distance, okay? So that kind of makes sense there. Right, so uh, just to let you know what knives I've got here anyway on, on display here, this is Extrema Ratios Doberman 4. Uh, and by the way, all of these knives I've reviewed, uh, done something on separate reviews. Uh, this is Ontario Knives uh, Spec Plus. Um, which is a clip point. This is Lion Steel's M7, uh, which is a big kind of drop point. And uh, this is Fox Knives uh, Combat Jungle. Okay. Okay, so here's some oyster mushrooms growing here. Now, uh, this is what's not good uh, for a big knife. 
and you're better off with a small knife, a folder or a really small knife. But I'm gonna try and take it off with a, a big knife and show you. Okay, so let's let's try and uh, get these in here without making a big mess. There they are, look at that, they're beautiful. The oyster mushroom. Very nice. Okay, let's have a better look at that. Let's take all of them. Hold on. Let's put those ones there. Mmm, they smell good. Let's take these ones. So you've got to be really careful with a big knife because you're going to make a big mess. You can make a big mess. Right. Okay, let's go and check that out. Okay, so here are those oysters I just took with that knife. Oyster mushrooms. They're very nice. Okay, so I didn't make a big mess, but you've got to be careful with a big knife. It's not as easy as using a small knife. Big knives, as I said, are for cutting big things, not small things. Okay.